Senator Jason Barrett can give you a great tour of Charleston and his many uh, delicious restaurants, too. Jason, good morning to you. How are you doing, everybody? I'm doing well. Good morning. What's the latest on Tudors now? We are almost done with the month of May. Yeah, we're getting there. We're um, we're looking at the August-September timeline, I think. Um, everything is going well now, so we got folks in there wrapping up the, the trades uh, on the rough end side, so we should be hanging drywall very soon. Wow. Well, you hang drywall, man. You start to look like a concept is coming clean now, right? Yes. Hey, uh, let's talk corrections. This uh, okay. this eastern panhandle area is particularly exposed with, I believe, a 54% vacancy rate at the ERJ and also at the Vicki Douglas Juvenile Detention Center, too. Jason, are we making any progress on this? Uh, we are, uh, and I was on the show a few weeks ago uh, when I was in Huntington, and we had uh, some meetings uh, to talk about the issue and, and really trying to uh, figure out a way to, to, to not only increase um, compensation to our uh, correction officers uh, across the state, uh, but also to, to look at ways to uh, maybe reduce the amount of folks that are uh, that are in jail uh, that are that are raising the, the cost of uh, the, per, the, the jail bill for counties, um, and also uh, making sure that um, some of the counties are utilizing day report, drug court, home confinement, all of those type of things that that actually are proven uh, to help people, which is, is the most important aspect of this. And we, we talk a lot about the jail bill. We talk a lot about uh, other things, but but it's important to not lose sight of, of what the most important thing is, and that's to, that's to get people back on the, on the right path. And, and certainly uh, in Berkeley and Jefferson counties, they do an excellent job with uh, those things and those resources. I think you heard a lot about it uh, here in the past, the last segment. Uh, but a lot of counties uh, don't utilize that, and, and that we can see that by their high jail bill, uh, recidivism rates, and those type of things. So uh, really at the direction of President Blair, um, we are looking uh, to solve a, a much bigger problem than just correction salary. And I think we're going to do that, or it's at least my hope that we kind of do that uh, at one time uh, and, and really solve a big problem um, and not just give pay raises. Now, pay raises are, are a huge part of uh, of why we, uh, you know, have problems with uh, staffing, and not only in our facilities here in the Eastern Panhandle, but in others. Uh, so we're we're working through uh, some things to to try to provide uh, additional salaries, but also fix these bigger problems. You are the chairman of the interim committee for the Regional Jail and Correctional Facility Authority. As that chair, Jason, what power does that give you, or authority? to take a deep look into this problem? Well, certainly as we have meetings uh, throughout um, the, our interim schedule here uh, through the rest of 2023, uh, we'll have um, corrections in, uh, come before us uh, numerous times. Uh, we're going to, uh, we, we've already had, uh, while we were in Huntington, prosecuting attorney there uh, who does an excellent job, uh, a, a judge uh, who is really big on drug courts. And so w what we're really going to do and try to focus on Again, in this committee, uh, and, and then in, in the groups that, that we've had, um, you know, outside of a regular interims to have these meetings, again, largely led by President Blair and, and certainly leadership of the House is there and representatives from the court and corrections, uh, so that we're all on the same page trying to, trying to work this out. But, but we're going to have meetings throughout the year and, and we're going to look at, um, trying to, to make sure that, that, that we take the necessary steps. Um, to incentivize uh, judges to, to uh, utilize drug court. A lot of them don't utilize drug court because it's a lot more work. So we have to figure out a way that um, that the drug court is, is utilized more often. Uh, again, the Eastern Panhandle, it's, it's great, and, and we're using uh, what's done in the Eastern Panhandle as well as Cabell County. Um, you know, we're using that as, as highlighting those um, to the rest of the state. Um, one of the things that, that has been my pet peeve for, for for a long time, and I've mentioned on this show, and I usually get get some hell afterwards when I criticize magistrates, but you know, there are magistrates uh, and some judges across the state uh, that refuse uh, to let bail bondsmen into the court. Uh, some of them uh, that if they're on call at, at eight o'clock at night uh, and they come in and arraign somebody, they won't set bonds. They'll make the, that individual sit there overnight um, as a way, I guess, to try to learn a lesson. Uh, but that is a cost to the to the county uh, at fifty around fifty dollars a night now with the per diem cost. Um, so that I mean that 
those are, are some of those issues that, that I'm looking that, that, that help ad- to address to help solve this bigger problem. Well, if you want to take a look at a bigger problem, you need to talk to a prosecuting attorney. So, Matt Harvey, you're up. Do you have any – and um, do you know what the jail bill is going up to July 1st? Well, the jail bill – Excuse the, me, the per the, diem cost. Yeah, I understand, I understand what you asked. Uh, so it goes to $54 and um, – I forget the change, fifty four eighty eight, I believe. But uh, I was able to change that uh, and provide a sliding scale. Uh, so the first 80% of the uh, pro rata share of, of nights for each county uh, is billed at a 20% discount from that $54. Uh, anything from 80% to 100% is billed at the fifty four eighty eight, uh, And then anything over that the county has over 100% of its pro rata share uh, would be billed at a 20% penalty. And so... That, again, is aimed at incentivizing these counties uh, to do the things that I just outlined through Day Report and others um, to, to drive that jail bill down, uh, but also put people in, in, in a rehab-type setting or treatment-type setting to, to help them get their life together and, and get back on the right path. Uh, so, that's, so that's what the per diem will go, will go to uh, starting July 1. It, it, it's kind of a separate – if there's too many people in jail, but we have too few guards, how does one issue affect the other, in your mind? Well, I, you know, again, I don't. We, we do have too few correction officers. That, that's clear. We have the National Guard working in there. Um, but again, this is because of the the, the 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 problem with corrections and not having enough uh, staff, uh, with not paying them enough. This has really shed light on a much bigger issue and. Um, you know, 51%, Matt, uh, of the people that are in the regional jails right now across the state are pre-trial. Now, I would we're, we're going to get that broken down by regional jail, but I would suspect because of the good job that, that you and others do in Jefferson and, and Berkeley counties uh, that that number is much lower uh, in our facilities. Um, but that would mean for it to be an average of 51. That means it's much higher in other areas. And I would fully expect that um, if you look at, at Canal and Boone and others who – again, have uh, judges and magistrates that, that don't let bondsmen in that, that um, or set unreasonable um, bonds, unlike uh, the way it's done here in the Eastern Panhandle, I think you're going to see a lot more pretrial folks um, uh, in jail in those other areas, which, again, are just raising the cost of, of the per diem for counties. Well, I know for Jefferson County, since I've been in office, the jail bill is half of what it used to be. Mm-hmm. And Berkeley, that's right. Berkeley County's done a good job with theirs. Absolutely. County, I mean, so there's County, there's there's ways on the books now to reduce your jail cost to, to a county. That's right. And and part of the problem is that the folks that have some influence on what the jail bill is, the magistrate and others, um, you know, they don't answer to the county uh, commissions. They uh, so the jail bill and you know in some instances really not. Uh, important to them because they're not on the hook for it. They don't answer to the county commission. Um, so that's, you know, I think that's why you hear some of our commissioners and I guess council members for at least another month or so, um, you know, have complained about the jail bill because they only have so much um, uh, authority or, or ability uh, to reduce it. Now, uh, and I, again, that was a, another reason for that sliding scale is because, you know, when counties are doing the right thing and they're, um, uh, reducing their jail bill, reducing the amount of inmate nights for their county, um, then they should uh, receive a monetary benefit for that. So that was the reason for the sliding scale. And those that don't, those that just say, um, we don't care what the, the jail bill is, we don't we don't care if we pay it or not. There are some counties that haven't paid, paid their jail bill in a long time, and um, so they get a penalty for that now. As I understand it, the justification for pretrial incarceration is either flight risk or likelihood of, of being violent. Are there other reasons? For, that's probably more of a prosecuting attorney yeah, question. Well, yeah, I was, I'm sorry. I was, I was looking. I was looking at Matt. When I, sorry. Th- th- those are the primary factors that a, a magistrate or judge should look at. What would you, if just guessing? If we went at these 51 percent that are there for pretrial incarceration, do you think we would find writ large, not for Jefferson County, but overall, do you think that most of those fit that category? One of those categories. Or do you, or do you think they're there for other reasons? Well, my, in my observations, 
uh, magistrates have really good memories. And so when they are, are arraigning someone, they'll, they'll look on the computer to see how many times that that individual has been in front of them or they've dealt with them before over their career. And so they have a really good, you know, running knowledge of, of that individual and they'll set the bond according to that. So, yeah, when I look at my jail bill, we get a, we get a copy every – or not bill, but we get an intake, uh, a roster, I guess, of, of the inmates that we have every week we get sent to us in Jefferson County and every county has that ability to do that. Most of the time it's because they haven't, they've failed to appear or they they're on a revocation. And so there's, they've had, a, they've had a, an, an honest opportunity to, to do it on their own and mm -hmm. they haven't been able to follow through with that. And so that's why they're sitting in jail. And Jason, for you, we know that the salaries for the corrections officers is a problem. I, I forget. I think, if, if I from our last discussion, I believe it's somewhere in the 30s that we're, we're uh, corrections officers are starting. So what is the sweet spot? I mean, if there obviously if we could pay one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to be a corrections officer, we would have lines. Right. We'd have people would be waiting in line to become corrections officers. We can't afford that. So what is the sweet spot? Do we know what are we shooting for in terms of correcting the salary disparities? Well, I think that's that's what we're working towards, John, and I think that's that's the reason for these meetings um, to to find out from uh, folks in corrections uh, what that number is, and, and there are several different um, uh, correction officer ranks, and so we're we're going through to to look at all the different ranks, figure out where um, uh, the the biggest need is, and, and when do we really start to lose uh, individuals? So we hire them, and you know, are they there for two or three years, then leave? Are they there for six months? Are they there for five to eight years? Uh, as they move up through the ranks, and and so where's the where's the the area where we, we need to make the biggest impact? So so I don't have a number for you right now, uh, as much as I'd like to give you one, uh, but but we're aware that that there has to be an increase. And and one of the things I want to clear up, and Matt makes a, a good point, there are some folks uh, that that absolutely need to be in jail during pretrial, and I'm, I'm not here to say we should just let everybody out because uh, there have been bills in the legislature that. Uh, that really allow magistrates a lot more discretion with uh, letting people out on their own PR, their own personal recognizance. I don't like those laws. Um, I don't vote for those bills. Uh, I'm usually one of, of very few people that vote against them uh, because I think it, that's uh, very dangerous. And, and my preference would be to set an appropriate bond, uh, have a bail bondsman uh, come in, a, a reputable bail bondsman who are now regulated uh, by the Office of the Insurance Commissioner, uh, and, and allow them uh, to, uh, to be responsible to make sure that person appears. So, so certainly somebody that is a flight risk, somebody that is uh, has the history of violent crime, they need to be in their pretrial, and I'm, I'm not advocating to let them out. But I, I'm talking – and John Schott, who's the former chairman of the Judiciary Committee, used to say we need to lock up people that we're scared of, not people we're mad at. And so um, I think that's what we, we kind of need to look at. it. And these folks that with substance abuse problems – yeah, we're mad at them. We, we get mad at them a lot, um, uh, but they, they have a substance abuse problem, and we need to get them help, not lock them up. When are the next interims, Jason? Uh, August, um, but I would anticipate these meetings uh, to continue um, uh, throughout the next couple of months so that we can, we can work through, again, not only the correctional uh, pay issue, uh, but these other issues that, that we can, again, help people and get um, and get some of these jail costs down and, and, and get some of these counties that are that are about to go bankrupt because they can't pay the jail bill uh, back in the black. So I know part of the legislation that was passed in regards to uh, helping counties with jail bills uh, included an incentive to in install something like a day report center, which is very much dependent on the prosecuting attorney in that county and the judge's attitudes towards it. Jason, do you know what percentage of the state's counties currently have an active day report center that's being operated like it's, Berkeley and Jefferson County? It's my understanding there are six counties that do, that do not utilize day report, and they have some of the highest per capita jail bills. Are, so it, there's, a, there's a very direct correlation. And, and there are grants out there. Uh, it's funded by a, a grant with uh, under the Department of Corrections uh, and, and the uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, I should say that that help fund these um, report centers all over the state. So there there are incentives again for counties to and there's money for these counties. Uh, some of the some of them are more regional day report because you, we have a lot of very small 
a counties with, uh, with a small population, and it doesn't make sense to have a day report in each of those little counties. But but there are more regional day report centers, um, and if that's the that's the model that best works for you know, small rural counties, then then great. Um, but again, we, we've had the incentives through those grants. We now have the incentive and the penalty uh, with the sliding scale uh, to help get these folks um, uh, out of an old way of looking at uh, treating and dealing with those that are addicted. Are those six counties mostly using prosecuting attorneys who don't believe in a day report center? I, I don't know enough to, to answer that. Um, I, I don't know the, the, the real reason why certain counties, and I think Clay and Calhoun are, are a couple of them this, with jail bills that are really high, and, and um, I don't think Clay County has paid their jail bill in quite some time. Uh, I, I know, I'm confident they don't use the day report, but I couldn't tell you um, if that's a prosecuting attorney issue, uh, if it's a county that says they just can't afford it. Uh, I, I don't know the, the, the reason why some of these counties aren't uh, utilizing day report. If we talk again in four years about this problem, is it likely that those six counties will have joined the way the other 49 think? Well, I sure as hell hope so. I mean, that's why we're doing all this work. Um, so I, I can't say for sure, but, but you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to, uh, to help um, really replicate the model that Berkeley, Jefferson, and Cabell County have, have shown the rest of the state. And, and we're going to highlight those uh, successes uh, to, to folks across the state. And if we need to give, um, you know, incentive to do that, fine. If we need to have penalties to do that, then I'm fine with that too. But um, um, the, you know, the, 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 the cost of corrections uh, and to re- operate jails and prisons in the state is incredibly expensive. Uh, and we need buy-in from our local governments um, you know, to help help people and to reduce the cost. So those six that can't pay, I presume the state ends up paying that jail bill? Well, that's right. And I think there are two or three, four maybe that are uh, significantly in the rears on their jail bill. Um, you know, part of the bill that, that we had this year that passed the Senate that was the sliding scale bill, um, uh, it uh, it had penalties in there for county commissioners um, if they didn't, they held them personally responsible uh, if they didn't pay their jail bill. And that the House wouldn't go along with that. Uh, and then we had to, to put the, the sliding scale formula into a House bill to get it through, but but it didn't have that personal responsibility, even though there's case law that says commissioners are personally re- responsible for paying bills. And uh, frankly, my, my position is this, that once the county meets its constitutional obligations uh, from a monetary standpoint, the next thing that they should pay is the jail bill. And that's, they owe the state that money. Um, that's, that's the way the system is. And um, again, most counties are, are paying the jail bill. No problem. A lot of counties uh, like Cabell and others have really dug themselves out of a hole. They were Cabell County, again, was $3 million in the hole in their jail bill. Um, and because of these programs that they've implemented, they have paid that debt back. And now they have a very low jail bill um, as it relates to, to their per capita. And that debt does remain with the state then. So the state has recourse to collect that money over time, no matter how much time it takes, Jason? Well, it, it's a debt that's continued to be owed to the state, and you know there are, have been in the past very little ramifications for not paying it, and, and that's why we were looking to to come up with some uh, some penalties to make sure that these commissioners are, um, you know, if they can't pay it, they can't pay it, and if they if they're at the highest levy rate, if they you know pay all their constitutional officers and they can't pay the bill, then I understand that, but um, but I don't think that's the case in a, in a lot of these instances. Jason, thanks so much for your time this morning. Any final thoughts? Uh, we're going to keep working. Um, I, I know that the the uh, pay raise uh, is uh, is what gets a lot of attention, but these other issues are, are, are really uh, important, and we're going to work on those. Uh, I will give corrections some credit. They are doing some things that, that help um, with the making the job better. Uh, I think it's the legislature's job to pay better. Um, but I think it's the, up to corrections to make to make the job better, and, and they are making steps in that direction. Thanks, JB. Thanks, guys.